Hey everybody, Mike Toy here with Bonsai Boise. Today I'm going to work on my, it's a ficus benjamina. I call it my bush to bonsai. This was the second one, so I call it bush to bonsai 2.0. I first debuted this last fall. I got it on Marketplace for I think like 50 bucks. It was a huge bush back then. I'm going to do some trimming and I'm going to show you some of the struggles I've had with it. So come with me. All right, so here it is. It's kind of wild and rough looking right now. I'll give you a look at it. That's what it looked like when I first brought it home. It was that big, it was a monster. And then that's what it looked like after I trimmed it down at the time. And this is what it looks like now. So it's grown out quite a bit, nice and healthy. You might notice it's almost like it's got two different heights. See those trunks there? I don't even know where to begin talking about this thing. It's got so much cool potential and so many different things going. Um, so it's multi-trunk. It's got about five or six trunks that are just long and straight with no foliage below where my hand was just a second ago. That presents a problem, which we'll, we'll get to. I'd like to have it down around that size there. So here's the top of it. So I chopped them all back a little bit in an effort to get it to back bud lower. And I'm going to continue that process today. But the reason that I'm doing it that way is ficus benjamina, unlike some other ficuses and certain trees, they, it, you can't cut a branch below a leaf set or it will just die off. It has to have some foliage. So because of the fact that those long straight branches or trunks have no foliage below right where about my hand is, right about there, it means I can't just chop them down or else the whole trunks will die off. And if the whole trunks die off, well, that takes away a significant portion of the main trunk at the bottom. Hopefully I'm not making that sound too confusing, but I'll get you a better look here. My plan B for this has always been to make it kind of a two-tiered tree with foliage up top and some, you know, the main feature down below and just fuse the top trunks together. Here's a look at the bottom part. I really think that this is where the most interesting features are of the tree. There's maybe, I don't know, 10 or 12 trunks down below, kind of all starting to fuse together. There's some cool aerial roots coming out. You can see where they're starting to fuse together in some spots there. A little backstory on this tree. The guy I bought it from on Marketplace said that they had it for, I think it was about 20 years. The person they got it from had it for about 10 years. It was a friend of theirs. And it's just been sitting in their living room all this time. Just sitting there growing quietly. And then I got it and chopped it all up. A um, little side project to this one that I'll give you a peek at here in a second too is all the cuttings that I took off of this initially. I'm working on fusing those together as well. I've got 10 or 12 of those little fusion projects going. So you can see it's grown out quite a bit, taking up a lot of room in my little greenhouse grow tent. That's another half of the reason that I want to chop it back. Let's take a look at some of those fusion cuttings. I know they look funny with a bag over it like that, but that's my bag trick. That's how you get aerial roots. So you put a bag over it, water it real good first, get a bag over it, spray some water so it's nice and humid in there. And it creates a little mini greenhouse. I've done this many times on tropical plants, and as you can see, Aerial Root City. Just coming out of everything, everywhere. Gives it some cool, raw character. 
like I said, I have 10 or 12. I just pulled two of them out, two random ones out of the greenhouse to show. And I'm just trying to fuse those together. And then my sort of loose plan from there is once they all start to fuse together, I'm going to fuse those fusions together. Make one monster tree. Maybe. Or maybe they'll look cool and I'll just keep them individual. Who knows? So yeah, that just gives you an idea there. If you ever want to grow aerial roots on a ficus or a shaflera, something like that, put a clear plastic bag over it, spray some water in there, put it in a greenhouse, or just by a bright window. They also do really well in general when you do that. They just grow really well. They love it. It's like, it's like a hospital if they're sick almost. But I digress. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue my quest of getting some back budding on these tall branches. So I'm pretty much just looking for the lowest spot where there are leaves coming out and I'm cutting it back to there. And I'll just keep doing that over and over. It might take six months, a year, two years, five years. I don't know. I don't really know any tricks to make it back bud other than this, this progressional um, just sort of phased approach where, see, by doing this, it has, it can't grow at the top much more. It can from the very top, but there's only so much that can come out of there. So it, it encourages it to pop out leaves and branches lower, maybe not a lot lower, but kind of lower. And then you do it again in a few months and again and again until eventually you got it down to the height that you want it to be. This is probably the most ambitious attempt. I mean, we're talking like three feet of all trunk. So um, it's interesting. It's been an interesting process so far. I gotta say, I really do love this tree. It's, it's in its raw form. It's not show quality or anything like that. It's just got a ton of raw potential. So much you can do with this thing. But my plan A is and has always been to keep it down around, I don't know, maybe a, I didn't actually measure. I'm going to say a foot, maybe 12 inches, maybe a little more. It'll just make that trunk down below seem even more massive the shorter it is. And I'm going to keep trying to encourage some roots to flare out of the bottom the way that it currently is. And just make it sort of a, you know, a raw tropical looking tree. Not super pristine and refined, at least not yet. Not for a long time. Something else I'm doing here with these cuttings, maybe not these little ones, but the bigger ones especially. I'm putting them in some water off to the side. Not to make more fusion cuttings, but you'll see here. I'm, I'm going to try to fit them back into this and try and grow that trunk even more. Okay, take a closer look at this bottom trunk part here. I gotta say, it's really hard to figure out what's coming and going down here. There's branches coming out of everywhere and fusing with others. And you gotta be kind of careful. You might chop one thinking, oh, there's some leaves down below, so I'm safe, only to realize, nope, that was a different trunk. So the one thing about this, it's got this little hollow spot, which could in itself be a feature if you wanted it to be. I kind of don't. I'd like it to fill in. The reason I, I keep this plan loose is because as time goes on and you work on it, 
it continues to evolve and grow. And so your plan might change over time. You might kind of like the way that it's evolving and go, oh, you know what? I'm going to go this direction. I do that a lot. So what I'm doing here, and I don't even know if I really have to be doing this, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm clearing out all the branches growing inside. Theory being, I don't need them. They're not helping fuse that trunk base at all. So it's just wasted energy. The tree's pushing out leaves inside rather than outside. Also, I'm trying to clear the way inside so I can start sticking some cuttings in there. That's one way I'm going to try to close the gap here. So here's some of the cuttings along with the giant mess that I typically make when I do stuff like this. I just sort of laid them out so I knew what I was working with. Trash can full of leaf carnage. That was kind of like three dimensional Tetris. I'm not putting a ton of thought as to which cuttings go where. I'm trying to use common sense, you know, if I see something that just makes sense. But I'm more of an 80 20 guy. 80% of the time it'll work out. 20% it won't, but you save 80% of the time. Or something like that. 20% of the time it looks great every time. A couple of these I can tell you I'm not... I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I should have put more thought into it. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. There's a, one or two that just sort of stick out like a sore thumb that maybe I didn't get a good look at it. The angle I was sitting at the time, I don't know. It's okay. Nothing is ever set in stone or permanent. And just to uh, reiterate some of the challenge with those long straight trunks in case it wasn't making sense earlier since there are no and i mean no leaves for the first three feet i mean it's just nothing but long straight trunk not a single leaf on like five of them the problem with it is that i can't i basically i need them because if i did a trunk chop and just bit the bullet and did that since there are no leaves below, it'll just die. That's like half of the trunk base down there would just die off. So I don't want that to happen. It would look super goofy and I would lose a lot of the appeal. Yeah, that's the one that wouldn't fit. So I really have no choice but to either res resort to plan B, which is the two tiered approach, you know, Big massive trunk and a lot of foliage at the bottom. Then it goes up a little bit. Same thing up top. That kind of reminds me of a poodle. I don't want it to look like a manicured poodle. So that's definitely plan B. Or keep on keeping on with this longer term phased approach. Cutting it back, hoping for some back budding. Repeat. Another option, which is kind of weird, is to fuse those trunks at the top and have it sort of flare out halfway down. That would be interesting. I'm not sure if I've ever seen one do that. So you got like five or six trunks that are individual at the bottom and then they fuse a foot and a half up the trunk. And then you get this massive thing at the bottom. So that might be cool too, but that's a little ambitious and I don't even know how it would look. I'm picturing it in my mind. Sounds cool. I might do it and look at it and go, ah, this is stupid. 
but then I'm commanded. So, yeah. We call that plan C. For now, I'm just gonna stick a bunch of cuttings in there. Now, since I can't really put a bag over this tall thing, I mean, I guess I could. I could go and get a really tall bag, I suppose. But I don't have one at the moment, so I'm going to get creative and try something different. It's kind of a medium-sized bag. So as I'm done fiddling around here with these cuttings, I'll show you. And in case you're thinking it, and I'm sure you are, I'll say what everybody's thinking. I'm not making it look any prettier today. It definitely doesn't look prettier with what I'm doing. It looks goofier, more raw, but that's okay. We're in the development phase, not the refinement phase. So, so that's what I'm trying to get it to do is just develop, just grow and, you know, continue to develop. I'm not in a huge hurry on this one. So here's what it looks like after a I'm done sticking cuttings everywhere. The ones I couldn't fit on the inside, I just stuck around the outside. Because why not? So here's how it looks now. I chopped it back more. And basically just transferred those cuttings to the bottom. They probably won't all live. You know, not all the cuttings, but some will. So here's what we're going to try. Got this clear plastic gift bag. First thing I do is rip it right there. So I'll take that up here in a second. So I'm just going to try to tape this bag up on the bottom half of the tree. I'm gonna spray some water in there and I'm gonna leave a little gap at the top so that I can stick my little sprayer in there and continue to keep it humid and moist in there. And I think A, that will um, encourage those cuttings to root and take root. Uh, and B, I'm hoping also that it encourages some back budding growth on those tall straight trunks, at least in the part where the bag is, that would be ideal. So we'll see, it's kind of an experiment. Now I'll tape up my little ripped hole that I did there. Can't actually remember why I'm doing this, but I'm doing it. So there must have been a reason. Then I've got my little sprayer. Stick it in there, spray it up real good. The sprayer, by the way, was the best $15 I ever spent with the greenhouse. Trying to stick a water bottle in all the spots to get everything just right was a super, super hard. And plus you have to fill up the water bottle like 20 times. The sprayer gets everything just right and it also helps with humidity. For some reason, it just those smaller droplets, I don't know why, but it, it just encourages humidity better than it would by just watering everything. So there's a look at it. It's like a little tropical jungle in there. Isn't that the prettiest thing you've ever seen? A half bagged up ficus benjamina chopped all up in half. This is a long-term project, so uh, gotta look at it with long-term lenses. I'm still half tempted to just fuse the top one together, but too soon. 
So back in the greenhouse it goes. Takes up slightly less room now. Thank goodness. So if you've got any tips on how, how to make a ficus benjamina back bud, particularly in spots that you wanted to, I would love to hear it. Even if it's only a half-baked idea. Most of my ideas are only half-baked. Still love to hear it. I'll try it. That's it in a nutshell. Thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. You can see updates on this and others. Have a good rest of the day, everybody.